Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. It's a sunny start to the weekend, but the local forecasters are tracking chances for rain. Plus chaos in Afghanistan after a suicide bombing at Kabul airport. President Biden vowing to stay with the plan to get all Americans out on his own timeline. But first, the debate over masks in schools for districts in Wayne County could be settled today. That tops our news at noon. Thank you so much for joining us today. Health officials are expected to update their guidance for schools, and the announcement will come after Oakland County became the first on this side of the state to issue a mask mandate. Nick Monticelli is in Gross Point, where the debate over masks has been very heated. Good afternoon. A lot of things could change here in Gross Point and on all of Wayne County if Wayne County follows suit like Oakland County did, mandating a mask in schools. And as you mentioned, it has been a hotly and highly debated topic in this community particularly. I thought it was really important because I think it's important to protect our kids and to follow the expert guidelines put forward by the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics that say that we should have universal masking. Optional, yes. If you want to keep your kid in a mask, go ahead and your kids comfortable in it. Fine. Mine are not going to. It seems like heated debates like this are dominating most school board discussions in Metro Detroit and the Gross Point School District. It was a contentious meeting when the superintendent announced their mask optional policy. We as parents know what's best for our kids and what you did was optional. If a parent wants to mask their child, have at it. If they don't, they shouldn't be required to. You put convenience, emotions, and fake news above safety, science, and guidance from our nation's top experts who have dedicated their careers to public health and safety. But there is a strong chance that policy is going to be overturned at the county level. Today, the Wayne County Health Department is expected to finalize decisions on whether or not to make mask wearing in schools mandatory. A spokeswoman for the Wayne County Executive told the Detroit News, we are in discussions with school districts and communities and heavily considering the implementation of a mask mandate for in-person learning. If that happens, Wayne County will be the second county in our area to implement a mask mandate. Oakland County did it earlier this week. And we want to keep our kids safe and in the classroom. That decision prompted a protest. It's really sickening to have other people in the government decide what's right for us and our family. Now, Macomb County, the Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle says that they are not going to put a mask mandate in place. They still want to leave that decision up to the individual school districts. Again, we're expecting Wayne County to make this announcement anytime, so stay tuned. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4. All right, thank you, Nick. In other coronavirus headlines today, we do expect updated coronavirus numbers later this afternoon. On the vaccine front, those Detroiters with compromised immune systems, you can get a third vaccine shot at 10 different community vaccination sites across the city. Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are now available for third shots. No appointment necessary for that. Booster shots also expected to be available for all fully vaccinated Detroiters. That starts on September 20th. The state's vaccination rate is at 65.3%. Now to the very latest on the airport attack in Afghanistan. The death toll continues to rise a day after a deadly suicide bombing attack at the Kabul airport. Evacuation flights out of Kabul resumed overnight. 12,500 people have been evacuated in the last 24 hours. Hours after a suicide bomber targeted the airport, killing more than 170 people, including 13 U.S. service members. We know at least 200 were wounded. ISIS-K, the ISIS offshoot in Afghanistan and Pakistan, now claiming responsibility. The president says he will stick to his August 31st deadline. He is promising to track down the terrorists responsible. The Pentagon also saying it is sticking with the president's plan. We have seen firsthand how dangerous that mission is, but ISIS will not deter us from accomplishing this mission. We appreciate your thoughts and prayers for all of our service members who are carrying on uh, this mission today. Above all, we remain focused on evacuating American citizens and other personnel designated by the Department of State, safeguarding the lives of those whom we are providing assistance and keeping American troops safe. Meanwhile, the U.S. is bracing for more violence in the region. Richard Engel reports from Qatar. The planes in Kabul are flying, but the evacuation 
that has already taken out more than 100,000 U.S. citizens, Afghan contractors, and asylum seekers, now has greater urgency and even more heightened security concerns that ISIS could try to shoot down a flight or carry out another attack. We believe it is their desire to continue those attacks, and we expect those attacks to continue. And we're doing everything we can to be prepared for those attacks. In Kabul, medical officials keep raising the death toll to at least 100 killed and dozens injured. From two bombings, one at a crowded airport gate, another close by at a hotel used as a gathering point to go into Kabul airport. As Marines were doing pat-downs at the gate, checking for bombs, an evacuee was wearing one and detonated it, killing at least 13 service members, most of them Marines. Amid the explosions, gunmen opened fire. The U.S. is increasingly reliant on the Taliban for security. Our former enemies are pre-screening and patting down evacuees before they arrived at the U.S. manned gates. But this time, the new and unlikely cooperation broke down. The Taliban have set up even more checkpoints around the airport, pushing out even further their security perimeter. It means if you're an Afghan in Kabul right now and you're trying to reach the airport, unless you have special permission, coordinated it with the Taliban or with a foreign embassy, your window to get onto that airport has probably closed. Richard Engel, NBC News, Doha. Time now for a check of the weather on this Friday. Paul Gross joins us now with a first look at the weekend forecast. Hi, Paul. Yeah, hi, Sandra. We've had a lot of quiet weather this morning, but a few places have had some very noisy and very notable weather. You can see this batch of very scattered thunderstorms coming through the area, but I want to point your attention to what happened in southern Genesee County. See that big blob right there? That was a massive area of very intense rain. And take a look at some of the rainfall amounts that fell in this area. You see, here's Grand Blank right here. The two inch or better rainfall amounts from that big soaking storm. Nothing severe, just heavy rainfall. So there's a flood advisory in that area. And then you can see you can see the track of another storm right here through Oakland County. But these dark greens are only one inch, maybe one and a quarter inch rainfall amounts. So again, we just have these scattered storms in the area right now. Nothing severe, but others are kind of percolating. So we're going to watch those through the afternoon. Right now, temps to the south are in the 80s to the north with more cloud cover. You're in the 70s, but it's muggy for all of us. If you're going to the ball game, or tailgating for the Lions game. Still could be a few pop-ups in the area late this afternoon, but warm and muggy. And during the Tiger game, we're sitting outside. It's going to be just in the 80s for the entire game. Be back with that weekend forecast in just a bit, Sandra. Oh, don't forget, uh, local forecasters app. That is a big tool to have this afternoon because if you have outdoor plans, our real-time radar that has, in the palm of your hand, gives you the ability to track this, this rain and also the future cast shows you where it's going. So download it from the App Store. It's free. Just search under WDIV. Now back. All right. Thank you so much, Paul. The Supreme Court blocking the extension of the Biden administration's coronavirus-related eviction moratorium. The eight-page decision says the CDC exceeded its authority in preventing landlords from evicting tenants for any unpaid rent. A majority of the justices ruled the only way the moratorium could continue is if Congress specifically authorized it. The high court's ruling now allows evictions to resume across the country. An Oakland County homeowner could face charges after 100 animals are removed from the home. It happened Thursday afternoon. This is in Independence Township. Animal control officers originally went to the house to do a welfare check, and that's when they found dozens of dogs, cats, rabbits, and a lizard. Some animals were already dead and a few died after being taken to a nearby shelter. That case is still under investigation. The Macomb County Health Department detecting West Nile virus for the first time this summer. The virus was found in a sampling of mosquitoes. So far, though, this summer, no confirmed cases of human West Nile have been reported in Michigan. The Health Department sending out a reminder today to all residents use an insect repellent with DEET to protect from mosquito bites. Also, you want to limit your time outdoors from dusk until dawn, as we know that that's when mosquitoes are most active. We do have an orange barrel alert for you for this weekend on I-75 in Oakland County. Northbound I-75 will close from 14 Mile to Big Beaver and southbound will close from Big Beaver to Rochester Road. Crews are going to be out there. They're going to be applying a surface treatment to sections of the freeway which were repaired after the July 12th tanker fire. 
Those closures, by the way, they start tomorrow night at 10 for your planning purposes, and then they are expected to end by 9 o'clock on Sunday night. Still to come, if you're in the market for a Peloton, you might want to buy now. We're going to have a look at a brand new deal from the bike maker today. Plus, also a Help Me Hank recall alert from Ford this afternoon, the problem affecting more than 16,000 2021 Ford F-150s. But first, a Kentucky business bursts into flames overnight. What investigators say started that fire.